And I'm going to explain what master production and master production thinking is all about. So the word is monozukuri, which stands for making things. There's also a word called hitozukuri, which means developing people. So we're developing people and then we're making things. Those two philosophy go side by side to create the master way or master production system. And it's probably the most important part of, uh, I think, their DNA. So let me explain the whole master production system and how that works, but also explain how the master product development and master engineering goes side by side in collaboration with the manufacturing to produce a high quality product. So there are two very important concepts and philosophy within the Mazda, sort of their DNA, and one is called Jimba Ittai, not sure if you can remember that, but, and also Kodo Design, which has been around for a while. And uh, Jimba Ittai essentially means the person riding the horse, so the horse and the human as one. So they're no longer two separated individuals, but they're actually working together to move forward. And then Kodo design is basically the sense of spirit, the heart and the spirit and emotions mixed into a product design to give a very unique character to the product that they have. So breaking down further, Jimba Ittai, again, human and horse together, traveling, moving together. That translates in terms of product development into having the right wheel alignment, right height, also uh, making sure that the right feel for the driver and the passenger is just the correct balance. And then Kodo design, it's all about the looks and the feel that will create the emotion. So making sure that the body surface have a certain curvature that we will talk about a little bit more. And then the high precision uh, assembly technologies to create a very tight tolerances across the board so that it's almost, almost like a Takumi or artisan uh, making these cars. So you have craftsmanship mixed together with a high precision manufacturing to produce something that's unique to Mazda's DNA. Um, but both of these have to be supported by a rigid, highly um, firm and st steady body uh, through uh, engineering methods. So that includes, for example, aluminum die casting that's equivalent to what we call the giga casting, which is the technology that was originally used by Tesla, which is instead of welding pieces together, uh, you melt aluminum, pour into a casting, and you form a complicated piece with no welding. Uh, there's one part of Mazda product that's using that die casting method, but also the framing, the structure, the, with the way the outer skin is uh, welded onto the body itself, all of that is a little bit unique to Mazda. So for example, the certain type of advancements in assembly technology allow to create the balance of the driver and the car itself, the way that the wheels are angled, uh, so that it has a little bit f uh, sharper and a more of a precise feel around the corners. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have a chance, go and drive a master product and drive a, a competitor's product. And you'll know what I mean by master product having a more precision, uh, more sharper feel to it. So everything from the toe arrangements and the calibration, all that are a little bit different in the Mazda compared to other models. Another thing is um, the precision of the actual installation. So if you are not careful or not precise enough when uh, installing major components such as the transmission, engine, and so forth, the powertrain, and if the center of gravity, gravity as a result is slightly off the, the standard, then you can have uh, excessive vibration, right? So you want to make sure that the powertrain is installed within the very tight tolerances that you see here to minimize any kind of excessive vibration, excessive uh, feel that you might get that's transmitted from the car to the body. So all those things are eliminated or reduced when they use a very precise, accurate manufacturing method. Now we talk about the Kodo design. Again, spirit, emotion, the soul of the car. They feel that uh, part of the whole emotional attachment to a car is how the car looks like from the outside. And in order to create a car that has a distinctively artistic feel to it, with a focus on craftsmanship, but also focus on accuracy and precision, they made sure that during the design, they built in the reflection of the metal pieces against the particular light, so that the texture of the metal, uh, even after painted, will create a particular pattern. And so they use computer assisted engineering, or CAE, to make sure that the body panels have accurate layers in such a fashion that 
it creates this zebra effect. And you might not believe me, so I encourage you to go and actually take a look at it. And if you look at it from a right angle, you'll see these layers and layers of uh, zebra reflection that you will not see in any other brands. I've never seen it anywhere else. And it seems like um, an excessive way to create this, this look and feel, but it's part of master DNA, craftsmanship, skills, reflection. It just creates the extra emotions that you don't see anywhere else. Uh, so some of that color design and reflection requires a certain baseline. So baseline requires uh, the actual measure, the way they measure the body structures, the way the robotics then uh, install them, because in manufacturing of cars, you actually have to create the body in white. That's just the basic metal structure. You have to then um, paint them, and you remove the doors to allow for easy access, and then they install all the uh, components inside the car, and the door is reinstalled back, right, so that the, the paint matches. But in that process, sometimes, if you're not precise enough, you can lose a bit of a precision and the gaps can change, uh, therefore making it uh, difficult to have that precise uh, match of doors and the components to the body. But in their case, they've taken the extra time to make sure that even the, the actual hinge and the tightening of a hinge takes into account some movement of the door. So when everything is installed, it's precisely built to the standard. Another important one is, I won't explain this, all this in detail, but the reflection of light in terms of paint requires that paint itself changes the technology. So the old method, like if you want to buy some kind of a, uh, a car with a metallic paint, I don't know if you're aware, but metallic paint actually have flakes of metallic built into the paint, right? That's how they create that sort of a, a shimmering effect. But the aluminum flakes, if it's too big, can, can make it look less attractive. So in the case of Mazda, they have introduced a couple of different color, soul red, um, machine gray, and also erodium white, which has much smaller flakes, very small, very fine flakes, so that the reflection and the shimmering effect of uh, metallic paint is much more, than, much deeper and much more meaningful than on your typical product. And so, again, I'm not going to explain some of the differences here, but the reflection coming through the metallic is different because the way they spread the, the flakes are different from other methods. Okay, this is just to uh, explain that a typical problem with the manufacturing is when the hood is finally adjusted, the gaps between the front hood and the front fender and between the hood and the front bumper area, that's the most difficult one to line up. And you might know that I often measure gaps of the cars to see how much of a width it is. But they have a, a special kind of a, a fixture or jig to make sure that when the hood is installed and the bumpers are install, installed, which is a separate piece, the gaps are maintained at, as a minimum level. But the bottom line here is that um, the layers of how they make cars in the body in white, so in terms of the, the actual roofing, the side panel, the inner panels, and the sequencing of these panels are a little bit different with Mazda, so that you have extra strength because the layering of the metals are uh, in different sequence than in a typical automotive fashion. The other interesting concept in advanced manufacturing is the whole idea of uh, aluminum casting. This is very new, uh, spearheaded originally by Tesla. So Tesla tends to have the front section and the back section all using giga casting, which is a huge casting machine that melts aluminum and then forms a shape. It's more, uh, uh, more solid, uh, but it's also more complicated. Uh, so for Mazda, they do have uh, die-cast aluminum part in the suspension pieces. That's where it takes the most amount of stress. So multiple, multiple parts that make up many, many welded pieces normally have been replaced with a single die-cast aluminum part. So these two images, if you look carefully, looks identical, or they are identical in terms of the movement. Can you tell the difference between these two? Yes, so this is the actual uh, production by the robotics. This is the digitized original version from which this was built. And we call them twin technology because uh, the technology is such, such that they can create the entire manufacturing and simulation and engineering of it using CAD and other 3D computing system. And then when they finally build the equivalent physical format, it, it's, it follows the exact same format. And you might have seen this uh, a little bit earlier, but this is the interesting concept of using AGV, Automatic Guided Vehicles. You can see the twin 
models that's moving with a car. So that it moves with a car, but also moves apart or closer depending on the size of the vehicle to be able to line up the part train and the rear axles are on the fixture. And then that's lined up moving together with the car bodies to be what we call the marriage, married together. And this is what allows Mazda to uh, create many different models in the same factory. So this is kind of carrying on with the idea, but this means that you can produce large cars, small cars, plug-in hybrids, no plug-in hybrids or hybrids, gasoline cars, or even BEV or battery electric cars can all be produced in the same factory using the same system because there isn't a physical trolley, what we call trolley, or a, like a conveyor belt that's moving the car using the old method. That's all gone. The floor is clear and flat, and AGV is simply moving based on instructions given to them. And so there's nothing physically tying the movement of the fixture carrying parts to the car uh, like it used to before everything's connected by chain and the motors, and those are all gone. All right, so this is just a sequencing of the uh, innovation that has taken place at the Mazda. As I mentioned before, I really think the Mazda's production system using the AGVs, the robotics, the automation, the special type of paint, the Kodo design, and Jimba Ittai design, and that thinking and the methodology behind it allows them to produce cars and SUVs that are uniquely different because they look different. It's more spiritual, if you want to call it, or more, more emotionally attached, I think, more emotionally expressive. And also the manufacturing method is maybe takes a little bit more time because they're doing more accurate precision, casting, welding, manufacturing, but allows for a much cleaner body when it comes out, so much so that the light can reflect through the body in a way that uh, kind of forming the zebra reflection, which I, again, you can't see that in any other brands. So I think their amount of energy and thinking they have going into product development and going into manufacturing is unique to Mazda that no one else is doing. And that's why I keep saying that I think, in my opinion, the Mazda production system and along with it, the uh, product development is perhaps the most agile in the world.